It's a beautiful night for college hockey in Kalamazoo on the west side of the state as Minnesota Duluth, the Bulldogs visit the Broncos of Western Michigan here in Lawson Arena. And welcome down to the rink level. Kenny Schrellinger here with Alex Goodman. Alex, both these teams looking for a win in NCHC play. They find themselves in the middle of the pack in the standings and looking for an exciting matchup here tonight. Yeah, a huge weekend between two very similar teams. Like you said, both in the middle of the standings of the NCHC, looking for a big weekend to elevate themselves to the top half as we close conference play. For the Bulldogs, Ben Steves will be a key for them this weekend if they want to get in the win column. You know, Kenny, I don't know if you're going to find a college hockey player with more talent and more skill than Ben Steves. This kid is electric anytime he's on the ice, poses a real threat for opposing defenses. And for the Broncos, year in, year out, they produce goal scorers. Dylan Wendt is one of them this year. Yeah, how about that? Two years ago with Ethan Frank leading goal scorer. Last year, Jason Poland leading goal scorer. The Broncos find themselves with number two in the country in goal scoring, Dylan Wendt. Again, this guy can do it all over the ice. Lots of speed coming to the neutral zone and a great shot. Both these teams ready to go here at Lawson Ice Arena. Should be a good one coming up next on NCHC TV. And welcome back into Lawson Ice Arena. Kenny Sherlinger, Alex Goodman, along with our tremendous Bronco Productions crew here for NCHC TV. NCHC Hockey, college hockey here on a Friday night. Let's take a quick look at the two net, net minders here for us, Alex. Uh, some switch, a switch here in net for Minnesota Duluth due to some injury. Matthew Thiessen in there here this evening. Yeah, no stranger to the net though. He's a fifth year. He's got a ton of experience for this Duluth squad. And, you know, I think for sure someone that that team can depend on the Vancouver Canucks draft pick. And, He's got the nod here tonight for Duluth. He's in there for Stace Gold, who was day-to-day -day with an injury over the last couple of weeks. Cam Rowe is in net for the Broncos. The transfer from Wisconsin has been tremendous in net for the team in white here tonight. Yeah, he's played every minute of every game for the Broncos here. They're, they're backstop for sure. And, you know, currently leading the NCHC in statistical categories for the Broncos. But, uh, you know, he's, he's going to have to stand up tall here tonight for Western Michigan against a tough to lose squad. The Lawson Lunatics ready to go here. It's been since December between these before since this Bronco team has played here at Lawson Arena and the students are back on campus after a winter break and they're ready to go as a lot of the Duluth players and head coach Scott Sandlin spoke about how exciting it is to play in this building with the Lawson Lawson Lunatics going. Yeah, those Lunatics are known now obviously here in full force tonight. So the puck is dropped here and we're ready to go. Game one between these two as they will face off here tonight and tomorrow on Saturday evening. You know, these two teams, I've always loved watching these two teams play. I feel they're so similarly coached and structured, and you always get such a good, physical, hard-played game between Western Michigan and Minnesota Duluth. Uh, it seems every weekend with these two teams is just full of excitement. You see the lines rolling through here on the top left of your screen for both these squads. Be in a fast and exciting game here tonight. Both these teams like to get up and down the ice. Marco's looking for the first chance here. His bump fires one at Nets. It's kicked off to the side. And taken by Duluth. Perkins carried it over and now it's back behind Cameron Rowe. Olsen with it. Fires it, reverses it back behind the net. Cedric Fiedler takes it, gets it to bump. He lost it. Battle for the puck. Back towards the end. Bump an exciting freshman for this Western Michigan squad. Here comes the Bulldogs. Big hit there by Fiedler against the wall. Broncos come up with it. Here they come in transition. And an offside it's going against the Broncos will halt play. Yeah, just in too early, and the Broncos were coming with numbers and speed off that transition into their offensive zone, but just a hair too early, and that play gets blown dead. 18.55 here to go in the first period between these two. Broncos with a shot on goal. Saved by Thiessen. Face off one by the Bulldogs. 
And that's fired down there for an ice. Oh, and it's just a coach's worst nightmare when you're a step behind the red line and you dump it in. You know, just one more stride, and that's a good dump in, but that one's going to go down for an icing call. Western Michigan able to get a fresh unit out there, and, you know, one of the strengths of this Western Michigan team I felt all year has been their depth. They roll four lines, and all four lines really capable of pushing the offensive play. Washi facing low height there as it's won by the Broncos and Washi. Stolen away momentarily, a battle for it against the boards. Washi comes up with it, chipping it away. And falling down there is one of the Bulldogs there. It's going to go down the ice. Or Bauer comes up with it for Western Michigan. And turned over. Good chance here for the Bulldogs, and they score. Ripping that one in between the legs with Kahini and Duluth on top, one to nothing. Yeah, silencing the crowd here early. Minnesota Duluth able to poke that puck off of Jacob Bauer's stick and turn it the other way. And a nice finish there. Right through the wickets of Cam Rowe. Anthony Maybe. Mangini gets Duluth on the board and notches himself a goal. 5'10", 187 freshman for Baxter, Minnesota. And the Bulldogs strike first here on this Friday evening. And boy, talk about a tough shot uh, for your first shot on goal of the game by Cam Rowe, a breakaway chance there. And really the, that, that stick on stick action might have changed the direction of that shot a little bit, but right through the wickets it goes. Western Michigan falling behind early on here. One shot, one score, and a goal there for Duluth to take the lead. And Mangini's fifth goal of the season. Well, especially in this arena, too, how huge it is to get that first goal. If you're a team coming in here on the road, you've got this Lawson Lunatics, you've got a packed crowd, and it's a loud building. And to kind of silence the crowd a little bit with that pregame energy, that's big for Minnesota Duluth. Face off in the Duluth zone. Battled around. Colangelo tried to chase it, and it's poked out there by Duluth. And Johnson back towards the other end. As the Bulldogs exit the zone, trying to get it towards the Broncos' end. Berger yeah, and, and a, a whistle. A delayed offsides call. I don't think anyone heard the officials yelling for it. Clevin was down there for checking the puck. As you take a look at Scott Sandlin, one of the best resumes in college hockey, three national championships under his belt in his 24th season in Duluth, and a whole bunch of Frozen Four appearances as well. Tremendous coach in the NCHC. Yeah, legend at the college level for sure. And he's one of those guys, too. I could just listen to him talk hockey all day long. And the way he sees the game is just so refreshing. Luth wins a faceoff, firing it down into the zone. Keep it in. And Gothi comes up with it up the near side. Goes, tries to drop it back there. Unable to corral it, though. Still kept in the blue zone and then turned over. Here comes the Bulldogs the other way. Lobos redirects that one to his teammate. And turned over in the neutral zone. Here comes Olsen quickly. Lombos poked it away. Here comes Granger now with the puck. Gets it to Ethan Phillips. Phillips absorbs a big hit. Lost the puck. Steve's had it for a second. Berger comes up with it. Sholem. Now Granger and an offsides once again on the Broncos. And it was too as Alex Bump had broken into the zone, but that pass back to Granger back into the neutral zone before Granger was able to push in. So another tough one there. The Broncos had a three on two with speed. And there you see the puck's out of the zone, bumps in it. Granger looking to the heavens because he knew he had a good opportunity. Face off one by the Bulldogs. 
Young fires it right into the glove of Cam Rowe, and he holds on to it to stop playing. At that point, just kind of getting one towards the goalie, getting an offensive zone draw down. And you take a look there at the head coach of the Broncos, Pat Firstweiler, in his third season, has led WMU to the last two NCAA tournaments and looking for a program record third trip to the NCAA tournament this year. One NCHC, her Burke, her. Brooks coach of the year last year as well. Yeah, what a heck of a start to a career for coach Firstweiler again stepping in and leading this team to a couple of tournament bids. Western Michigan has never been to three in a row, so a chance here to do that this season. Bulldogs come up with it. Biondi with it. Tried to center it in a nice save there by Cam Rowe. Dangerous play. It's kept in the zone though. Here comes the Bulldogs again. Shot right at the chest of Cam Rowe and he's getting tested early on. And while puck possession has seemed to be a little 50-50, Minnesota Duluth taking advantage of their opportunities in the offensive zone have had a few really dangerous looks towards goal. As you see there, another shot through traffic. Guys in the area looking for any rebounds, but Rowe able to collect that one for a whistle. That was Connor, Connor McMenamin, the transfer from Penn State, firing it right at the chest of Cam Rowe. The third shot on goal for Minnesota Duluth here this evening. They win the faceoff. And shot blocked there by Hugh Larkin. Broncos come up with it, trying to exit the zone. Galambos with it. Cassetti kind of redirected it to Washi. Duluth back with it. Big hit on the board there, Hugh Larkin. Beedler gets it to Larkin. Larkin across dice. Tim Washi, and he's going to dump into the deep into the Duluth zone. And a line change here for Western Michigan. Bauer trying to poke that one away. Here comes the Bulldogs quickly. Behind row. Around the boards. And shovel ahead by Hillebrand. Big hit there. Colangelo absorbed that one. Hillebrand back behind the net. Trying to get it to his teammate Colangelo. He comes up with it. And a shot. Blocked. And on front, Colangelo can't get it. Off the side of the net. Just that close by Colangelo for another one. She came in, located that rebound, and got a couple of chances, but just couldn't bury it. Alco still trying to keep it in the zone, and then it's poked out there by Duluth. And a whistle. Stop at your play here. I can't tell you that. That Hillebrand, Constantini, Colangelo line, they're so effective. They're all so big. And they can forecheck there and crash the net as you see Colangelo coming in, beats his man, but just can't get it to go. Second chance maybe going off to the side of the net. A near miss for Western Michigan. Colangelo just a too sharp of an angle there to try to get that one in the back of the net. Broncos win the face off. Knubel shovels ahead to Phillips. Here come the Broncos with a two on two. Phillips shot, shoveled aside there. Thiessen. Uh, Gallatin, I think, got in front of that one. A big shot block by the defender. Dangerous pass there across the ice. Battle for it at center ice in front of the two benches. And it's chipped down into the Broncos' own. Carried in by Sholon, and then they lost it. Here comes Olsen up the near side. Deeks, shots. That one's wide at the net. I think Bump might have gotten a piece of that, too. Guys are selling out to block shots for their goaltenders here in the first. Went trying to get it. Malambos comes up the center of the ice, feeds it over to the left side, the bump. Now Granger trying to shovel it in front of the net. Gets blocked. Perkins came up with it, got it to his teammate. Comes the Bulldogs out of the zone. Quick exit. Perkins with it. Trying to get it to Steves. Lost the puck. Turnover. Here comes the Broncos with Dylan Went on center ice. It's the Washi. 
Now to Went, trying to center it, got blocked away again. Shot. And misfired on that was Hilsendegger. Washi tried to reverse it. Nobody was home. Washi comes up with it again right at the center of the net. And it's Olsen comes up with it, trying to carry it safely out of harm's way. Battle for it in the corner again. And a push there. And a delayed penalty, and the Broncos are going to go on the power play. And Duluth just got caught in their own zone a little bit. They got caught chasing, and Western Michigan able to draw a penalty there with good offensive zone time. one nothing score in this one. Minnesota Duluth on top. The Broncos looking for the equalizer on the other side of this break going on the power play. Welcome back. Welcome back to Lawson Ice Arena. Kenny Schrillinger, Alex Goodman alongside with you, NCHC TV. Broncos on the power play, the Jersey Mike power play for a sub above. Broncos looking for an equalizer after the early goal by Duluth and Anthony Mangini and his fifth goal of his young career as a Bulldog. Phillips, centers of the Berger. Berger with it at the point. One-timer for Colangelo. Rattles off the board, still with it is Phillips. Berger with it to Phillips. Phillips got it knocked over into the corner. Washi directs it over to Colangelo. Now in the middle, they get it to Phillips. Phillips with the puck, shot it. Thiessen, and a nice save there. He had to block that one at his chest a couple of times there with 122 left on the power play. And the Broncos able to regroup once after a shot. They get the puck back and put it to the middle of the ice. Phillips gets a good shot on goal, and that rebound's hanging out there. Costantini gets a stick on it, but Thiessen gets that shoulder down. Now, and this is a Western Michigan power play, fourth in the nation at 27.8%. And, you know, they do it so many different ways. There's different looks on every line that goes out there, and it's something that's really challenging to plan for for opposing teams. Duluth gets it off the face off and fires it down towards Cam Rowe. He leaves it for Schillen. Dumps it back for Granger. Approaching the minute mark on the power play. Lombos, cross ice pass, shot by Buck. Was loose. Broncos control it. Schollen, the Granger. Granger, cross ice, cross ice again, it's blocked. Ranger with it versus the Sholin. Colombos misfired on it. It's in the corner, but the Granger and the Broncos still with it. Under 40, Granger shot. Kicked off to the side there by Thiessen. Broncos still controlling the puck, though, in the Duluth zone. Down the bump, tried to redirect it at the net. They save there by Thiessen, and it's fired down into the zone. Man, what a series. The Broncos really able to pass that puck around and get the chances they were wanting at will, but Duluth blocking some shots and a couple of timely saves by Thiessen. Sam Colangelo carries it. Ten seconds left on the Bronco power play. And that's going to do it there as that one shoveled it across center ice down to Cam Rose. He's now caught in no man's land, gets rid of it with Bauer. Ten and a half to go in this first period. Duluth survives the first Bronco power play of the evening. Again, a big moment there is Duluth with that one goal lead took the penalty. But even though Western Michigan got some good offensive chances, Duluth able to hold them off and keep this a one goal lead for them. Duluth with the fourth best penalty killing percentage, 81 percent in the NCHC. You mentioned the Broncos were the best in the NCHC in power play. You get to this point in the season, just how crucial special teams are. Battle for it in the corner. Young fires it back behind the net. Fiedler comes up with it. Toulouse keeps it in the zone. Shot. Like Rowe got his hand stick on it. Now inspired once again, Knubel carries it out of the zone and dumps it back into the loose zone, back to Thiessen. Olsen finds some space and Bauer pokes it away. 
Wilson Dagger with it. Hit along the boards. Bauer. Chips it down. And Phillips comes up with it. Bauer knocked down. And Duluth comes up with it once again under nine to go. Perkins cross ice. Over to Steves who dumps it over to Cam Rowe. He plays it. Got caught a little bit again. Comes up for grabs at center ice. The ebbs and flows of this game already. It's been punch and counter punches. Anytime one team gets some offensive zone pressure, the other is able to turn it back the other way and get some of their own. Rowe holds on to it to stop play, and with 826, Duluth still on top one to nothing. If you're just joining us. Shot on goal count. Broncos eight. Bulldogs seven. Anthony Mangini with his fifth career goal to put Minnesota Duluth on top early in this one. Game one of a two-game series between these two. Love it. Ranked Broncos back here at home for the first time since December. Good chance there for Duluth as it was went wide. Bump comes up with it. Gets it to Went up the near side. Went cruising in. Tried to get it out in front. Nobody was home once again. And Alex Bump, a freshman again. He continues to find himself in good scoring areas, but just has struggled a little bit to find the back of the net as much as everyone kind of expects from his play. And he's such a good, strong forward for a freshman. And there again, Granger's able to find him in the, in the slot with a pass, but just eluding his stick on what was going to be a great A scoring chance for Bump. Another face off in the Broncos zone as Roan had to hold on to that one. And they really got the Broncos on their heels defensively so far early on. You know, and that's what fast play can do, right? You, you, you don't have to be as deep or as skilled all the time. If you play with that speed, one little hesitation of a second can cost you. And Western Michigan, again, doing their best to try to defend the speed of Minnesota Duluth right now. Larkin popped that one up, cross ice right in front of the Duluth bench. Here comes the Bulldogs again as they dump it and right into the glove of Cam Rowe. And Scott Sandlin spoke about it in his press conference, weekly press conference, how this game was going to be fast, especially in Lost and Ice Arena with the crowd that kind of makes it faster. And then the way the Broncos play and was expecting, as you see the head coach there, a, a fast game. And it looks like that message got across to his team as they started off quick and got off to an early lead with a 1-0 lead early on here. And again, it's so fun watching these two teams because, again, they're similar. They both play so fast. They both have such a hard working forecheck and back check that, again, there's no space out there at times, yet the guys are flying around the ice, laying the body. And again, it's a, it's a great style of hockey both ways. Berger fires it in the net. That one kind of rose up on Tease in there back behind him. They try to keep it in. Here comes a numbers opportunity here for Duluth. Fired at the net, and Rowe comes up and plays that one. That was a dangerous play there. Giving chase there for the Bulldogs was Pionk. With 7.15 to go, Duluth still trying to get another goal. And again, a seemingly kind of inconsequential play in the neutral zone, and all of a sudden, Duluth springs themselves in a two-on-one, and puck just gets lofted towards goal. Cam Rowe alertly gets out there and catches it before anything's able to happen chaotically behind him. Another face off won by Duluth and a sharp angle shot. Rowe somehow kicked that one out. Left the right side of the goal wide open. Here comes the Broncos with a counter. Colangelo fires it across dice ends up with it on the other side. Angel fires at the net. Hildebrand gives chase, reverses it to Colangelo, back behind the net. Bulldogs come up with it, trying to get it out. That one's up the boards of the Broncos, carried across once again. Colangelo from the right side, that one's wide. Hildebrand keeps it in. Sam Colangelo trying to find somebody. Costantini couldn't find it. And the Bulldogs exit the zone. Fiedler ricochets it off the board, and here comes the Bulldogs as they carried into the Bronco end. 
Battle for the puck, and it's turned over. Here comes the Broncos, Shankothi, looking for Phillips. Shankothi got that one poked away by Thiessen. Shankothi comes up with it once again with six minutes to go here in the period. And that one's going to get across the line. Fiedler fires it in behind the netminder, and Thiessen plays it. Two on one was defended so well as the pass wasn't there, and Shingothi just ran out of space. Thiessen able to cut off the angle and just get his paddle on it. Olsen with it. Draft pick of the Bruins as that one's fired down. Back behind the Bronco net. Berger trying to get that cross ice with Sholin. Now went with it, tried to chase it. The defense there by Gallatin. Steves, has been kind of quiet here. Leading goal scorer for the Bulldogs, chasing it. Bulldogs control it in the Broncos zone. Olsen tried to get it in center. Ain't nobody was there for Minnesota Duluth. Here comes the Broncos again. Battle for it at center ice. As it squirts over it back into the zone of the Broncos. Olsen Dagger lost it. Johnson poking it. The Perkins. Perkins from the right side. Wrap around, looking for somewhere to go. Went, got it, and stole it away. Still battling it for it, though, as Hilson Dagger comes up with it, trying to shove it across the boards. It's trapped in the corner. And Bauer races for it behind the net. Washi out the bump. Bump all alone. Gets that one blocked. Washi comes up with it behind him. Washi gets it off the boards. Now back to Larkin. Larkin battling for it. It's based. Makes a light hit from Larkin. Washi. It's spun around, looking for the puck. And a shot, and kicked off to the side by Thiessen. Under four to play now, or get into the four-minute mark here in the first period, rather. Larkin reverses it, back behind the Bulldog net. Lombos giving chase as that exits the Duluth zone. Sholin shovels it back in. I'll tell you, that big line for Western Michigan, sometimes it's exhausting just to watch them forecheck. They're all over the puck and not afraid to put their guy into the boards. Biondi chasing it. Berger trying to race to the puck. He gets there first, but still battling Biondi. And a shot from the blue line there. Dangerous play. It's Rowe shoveled that one off to the side. Under three and a half to go in the first period. Gallatin with it. Fires it right into the hand or the mitt there of Cam Rowe. And we'll take a quick break here from Kalamazoo. 1-0 Minnesota Duluth on the Mangini goal here in the first period. Matthew Thiessen getting the start here in net. Game one between Minnesota Duluth and Western Michigan. Kenny Scherlinger, Alex Goodlin alongside with you here for NCHC TV. Both these teams looking for a win. Broncos looking for a win at home. And after a split against Miami last week down in Ohio. The Bulldogs coming off a split back-to-back -back overtime games against Colorado College as they were home last weekend. If that doesn't sound like the NCHC. Yeah, it's a dangerous play there as Rowe covered that one up smartly as with three minutes to go. He's had to make a lot of tough plays there. And Toulouse really taking it to the Broncos here in this first period. Yeah, you know, and both these goaltenders really seen a, a, a truckload of shots here in the first period. No easing into this game. And as you see Duluth kind of throwing pucks in at all angles. And why not? Because when you're clouding that front of the net, anything could happen. It can go off a body or a skate. You see Cam Rowe reacting there and just stopping that puck right on the goal line. Three minutes on the dot to play here in this first period. Minnesota Duluth on top by one. Anthony Mangini with his fifth career goal for Minnesota Duluth, the freshman. Early on, got the Bulldogs on the board, and that's where we sit so far. Ellison fires it down, rattles it around the boards. Larkin Pate plays it. The Fiedler. Fiedler up to Cassetti. 
this is going to go for a nice yeah, and they say Gassetti didn't touch the puck and definitely right there I think it went through his legs but Broncos had numbers down low and I think they thought they won the race to the dots but a nice things whistled I'll come back down to Cam Rose blocker side a lot of faceoffs in the Broncos zone so far and Typically a good faceoff team is this Western Michigan team. No better than Washi, but Duluth's really been winning a lot of draws here tonight. Especially in the crucial points here in the Broncos zone. About even here tonight as well. Approaching the 215 mark here in the first period. Berger misfired on it. Turned over. Bulldogs with a little bit of a chance here. Olsen. Wraps it around. Perkins looking for it, takes a big hit there in the corner. Bianc, cross ice, cross ice there. Now to Olsen, shot, that one was wide. Bianc in front of the bench, fires it over. Steve's with it, and an offside it's going against Duluth. And just barely too as Perkins was Hustling to get back across the line, but just couldn't quite get there before that puck came back in. So 148 face off here between Well Height and Luke Granger. Back behind the Bronco net. Wilson Dagger. Hager with it. Goats wraps it around the boards. Ranger comes up with it. Out of fort. Bump shovels it down, trying to get it to Granger. He does back behind the net. Granger looking for somewhere to go. Bump shot blocked. Still with it with a minute 15. Broncos looking for an equalizer before these two teams head to the dressing room. Bulldogs get it out. Beyond, he was chasing it there. Nice play there by Connor McMenamin. Bianc with it, back behind the net. Under a minute to play now between here, the Bulldogs and the Broncos. Fiedler with a big hit right in front of the Duluth bench. Ostantini comes up with it, drags it, gets it out in front. Shot wide, Colangelo could have connect. Oh boy, what a play by Costantini to get around his man and feed that puck, and the Broncos just couldn't quite finish it. 30 seconds to go. The Broncos still threatening here. Keeping it in the zone, Colangelo got that one right back to him. After it was blocked, still has the puck. That one is blocked down. Galambos fires it at the blocker. Shot score! Zach Galambos equalizes it here with 18 seconds in the first period. And that Bronco pressure just kept on coming and kept on coming. Galambos able to find his own rebound off of a shot, and he puts it in the back of the net and puts some energy in this building in the closing seconds of the first period. A huge goal for Western Michigan. The Broncos just kept on chipping away, chipping away, and Zach Galambos with it as he just said never say die there and fires it right in the back of the net to get the equalizer. And you see he just puts that puck on net for his first chance right on the goal line again. You got Hillebrand in front of the net. A lot of bodies there for Western Michigan. Put that puck towards net. Thiessen has a hard time craning his head around the big frame of Hillebrand. And Galambos able to find his own rebound and put it in. Seventh goal of the season here for Galambos. The veteran from Walnut Creek, California. Period one is going to end here at one apiece. The Broncos answer just before these two teams headed to the dressing rooms. They equal it up at one apiece after Minnesota Duluth got on the board early on to take the lead. And Alex, it was a really fun period back and forth. I'll tell you what, Kenny, give me six periods of this this weekend and I'll be a happy man. These two teams came out flying from the locker rooms, and again, it's just a display of speed, grit, physicality, and we got a tight one here at Lawson Arena. So Minnesota Duluth gets on the board early on. Anthony Mangini gets his fifth goal of the season and puts Minnesota Duluth on top, but the Broncos answer right before the break. Zach Colombos 
with his seventh goal of the season. 1-1 game here in Kalamazoo. Second period about to get underway here. 1-1 hockey game here between Minnesota Duluth and Western Michigan as both these teams back to take the ice here for the second step. step. Second period of play. Kenny Trillinger, Alex Goodman, Sam Rowe having himself a tough but successful first period. They're only giving up one goal as we take a look at the series history here between Duluth and Western Michigan. Minnesota Duluth leads it 27-17 and three. Western Michigan fared well against the Bulldogs last season with three and one against UMD and swept the Bulldogs in Duluth, but they split back here in Kalamazoo last season. And like you mentioned, Alex, when both these two get these two teams get together, it's always a fun matchup. Yeah, for sure. And again, you know, obviously Duluth really holding that that series record uh, historically, but in the last few years, Western Michigan obviously seen a little more success. But um, you know, here in Kalamazoo, the arena is always rocking, and these two teams really always play a, a really physical game. And Scott Sandlin hit on the Broncos, and what makes a special play in a loss in Ice Arena is a and it, the games are fast and the Broncos are fast, makes the game seem a lot quicker and his team would have to figure that out early on. They did, they scored on early on with a goal at the 142 mark in that first period by Anthony Mangini. We're back to action here in the second period. 1-1 between these two teams looking for a big NCHC win. Bulldogs looking for their first ranked win of the season. Played ranked CC last weekend and at home. Steves fires a hot shot there. Popped up in the air there by Rowe, and then he shovels that one across the blue line. <laughs> Steves is such a shooter, too. I mean, just that quick little one-timer from the top of the circle, and he had the top corner labeled. Cam Rowe just able to shrug it away. Yandi chips it right in front of the net. Rowe lets that pass through. Sholin. Turns it over, right in front of the net. Rose stopped the first one, second one blocked high up in the air, back behind the net. Sholin comes up with it, another testy play there. Ostantini trying to regain the puck, a big hit there in the corner. Absorbing that one was Goats. Here comes Duluth, down center ice. Pionk chips it, chases. Cassetti, chased that one out. Wraps around the board right behind Cam Rowe. Bulldogs chasing once again, fresh set of ice, sheet of ice here for these two teams flying around early on here in the second period. Two blue lines have been really contested here tonight as both teams really trying to make it difficult to have your opponent enter into your own zone and vice versa trying to break out the same way. Blue pressure in. Arkin finds Washi. Now the Hilsendagger trying to get it, slipped it. Nice play there by Thiessen. And Hilsendegger had him beat, just could not pull the trigger as he dragged that puck around the glove side. And the puck just goes harmlessly to the corner. Phillips with a shove there. The crowd liking that one. Comes the Broncos, shot, save, Thiessen. Going crashing into the net with Shingothi. Oh, what a sneaky, heavy shot by Owen Michaels, who comes in, tries to use the defender as a screen. And Thiessen had to have a quick glove on that one. A really solid shot here. And here you see Hilsendegger. He makes the move, gets the puck in the open space, but just cannot put it back into the net. Two really good chances there for the Broncos after a couple chances from Duluth early on with 17-14 to go in the second period now. As like you mentioned there, Hilsendegger with a nice move. is cutting finish it off a sneaky shot there from Michaels and another sneaky shot there is that one's going to be held on there by Thiessen yeah a couple of freshmen for the Broncos putting some good wood towards net as that one 
comes from Alex Bump on a set faceoff play. And right off the draw, comes in, grabs that loose puck on the dot, and flings it towards net. Thiessen's able to get it and pounce on the rebound. Thiessen in net tonight after Zach Stasekul is battling a injury. He's day to day. And yeah, that one from Bump is blocked it before it gets to the net. Thiessen making his first start since November. Of earlier in the season, standing in there strong. Got 15 saves tonight for the Bulldogs. Under 17 to go here in the second period. Tie hockey game between these two. Minnesota Luther answered early on, and Perkins couldn't get control of that one to try to get a shot at the net. Broncos with Zach Galambos answered right before these two teams went into the dressing room for the first intermission. That's where we sit right now. Knotted up at one apiece. Vinsky was chasing. Dolan comes up with it. Shot. That one's redirected into the corner by Thiessen. A ton of traffic that that puck found its way through. That one's chipped high into center ice. Allerton. Shot. Nice save there by Rowe. Quinn Olsen with it. Goats shot. That one's redirected. And a whistle on the play. And it's going to be a too many men penalty on Minnesota Duluth. Linesman right in front of the bench makes the call. As they tried to scramble and correct a, a line change error, but it's no avail. It's Duluth going to be a Western Michigan power play. On bench, or on the ice. Two minute penalty. Good call here. Western Michigan back on the Jersey Mike's power play and again as, as we saw from coach Sandlin's notes this power play unit for Western Michigan is so good you got to stay out of the box if you want to be successful it's their second minor of the night and Western Michigan sends out Granger went bump Glambos and Sholand on the power play Duluth killed the first penalty on the Bulldogs, the first power play opportunity in the first period. They're looking for a second one against this high-powered special teams unit for the Broncos. The Broncos look to notch the second goal in this contest and take the lead. The Lambos, Allen shot in front, redirected, went chasing. Alex Bump with it. Very shifty freshman for the Broncos. Granger shot. That one's way off the boards. Wide right on the right side of the net. Granger trying to get the bump. Lambos out to the blue line. And out of the zone at center ice. Nolan gets it to Alex Bump up the far side. Trying to cut in at the net. Reverses out to Granger. Granger shoved into the boards. And it's kept in. Lambos over to Went back behind the net. Reverses it to Granger. Takes a big hit. And that one's fired down into the Broncos zone. Really, Duluth gets a change. really strong penalty kill shift there by Minnesota Duluth. They pressured the Broncos and really disrupted anything Western Michigan tried to get going and successfully got the puck down the ice. Costantini. And yeah, it's going to be offsides going against Western Michigan. We've taken a lot of close ones here early on. You know, and it, it's these teams looking for any advantage they can going across the line. We take a look at the comparison here. Power play for Western Michigan first in NCHC. And Duluth at fourth in NCHC with their penalty killing unit. And they're 26 seconds away for killing off the second power play of the night for the Broncos. This is one last push here with 20 seconds left on the Jersey Mike's power play. Berger 
to Phillips. That one was blocked. Berger keeps it in, and it comes Duluth the other way. Olsen with it. Olsen takes a light hit there from Ethan Phillips. Battle for the puck. And Duluth comes up with it. Pierce with it right in front of the bench. Cross ice into the corner. Rowe thought about coming out for that one. He lets it go. Berger gets it to Phillips. Phillips up the boards. Lost it. Here comes Duluth. When Olsen to Steves and there's a quick shot. Man, Ben Steves can really get that one on net quick. Yeah, he flies into the zone. He gets some space and opens himself up for a shot so that any time a puck comes near him, he can pull the trigger. And again, he gets a really good shot on goal. Almost catches Camero. Broncos with Knubel. Shots with Bauer. He stopped there at the net. 13 minutes to go in the second period. Battle for the puck in the corner once again. Wilson Dagger lost to Perkins. And it's at center ice here, and Pionk with it. Fresh skaters here for Western Michigan. Rowe plays it. It's at the Phillips. Phillips turns, pushes it ahead. Over to Michaels, shots. And that one scored it out to the other side. Nobody was there. Lots of snow blown in the face there. Thiessen, here comes the Bulldogs the other way. That one's popped up in the air into the Broncos. And Phillips tried to redirect that, that to his teammate a little bit late. It's turned over again. Some good looking chemistry with that Michaels, Phillips, and Guilty line. And again, a line that didn't really get created until a month and a half into the season, but they've really found a niche here for Western Michigan. That one just fired over into the Bronco end by Owen Gallatin. Ranger tried to carry it in, lost it. Approaching the halfway point here in the second period. Still scoreless in the second period, 1-1 game here. Both of them coming in the first period of play between these two. Mangini for Duluth, the Lambos for Western Michigan. Broncos get it back, Alex Bump. Two on two, Bump, drag, shot, save there by Thiessen. Berger went crashing into the boards there. Yeah, Berger and Bump go in together and a nice little play by Berger as he Pushes the defenseman back with some speed and gives Bump some space to get a good shot on goal, but nice save by Thiessen. Colangelo lost an edge and went down, almost lost the puck. Scholen dumps it, will head to the bench. Perkins looking for Steves. Steves. It's off. Goats lost it, there has to retreat. Broncos chasing. Ten and a half to go in the second period. So we're going to go down for an icing. Well, it has been an incredible pace here in the second period as this game has just been back and forth and back and forth with teams finding some space, getting some chances on net. But I'm telling you, that neutral zone, it's like a, a runway. I mean, these, these guys are flying through the neutral zone, trying to get zone entry, any space they can. And it is, it is almost panic mode for defensemen out there. One false step, and you got a guy behind you, it seems. Broncos went in the faceoff battle 16 to 11. It was about even in the first period, but the Broncos pulling away a little bit here. As Colambos fires that one, it was blocked up in the air. Now in the corner, Pionk was going for it. Perkins with a battle. Both the Bulldogs and the Broncos battling and trying to gain some real estate with the puck there. Lambos fires it at net. Nice deflection there by Cassetti. Almost got that one in on goal. But an offensive zone penalty here taken by Western Michigan. He's going to go against Hugh Larkin. And that's going to put the Bulldogs of Minnesota Duluth on the power play on the other side of this break. 10.05 to go. 1-1 hockey game between Minnesota Duluth and Western Michigan. 
Power play coming up next. Minnesota Loop going on the power play here and the hooking on Hugh Larkin. Let's take a look there as that catches Aaron Pionk. Yeah, it almost looked like Pionk was trying to sell the high stick a little bit, but regardless, in the defender, when you get your stick horizontal on your opponent, it's going to get called. So the first opportunity on the power play here for Minnesota Duluth here this evening. And that was poked away. Here comes Luke Granger looking for some space. Short-handed opportunity. Turns, and he's going to kill some time here. He just couldn't quite get the leg up and get alone there. So Granger almost had a breakaway in Western Michigan. There may have gotten away with the too many men calls. Yeah. Granger coming to change as that pass comes right to the bench. Duluth bench really campaigning for too many men there. Broncos control it as they chip it down. Thiessen's going to play it. So a minute into the Duluth power play and no opportunities here so far for the Bulldogs. Steves working against Phillips. They hit with Olsen in the zone. Steves with it. Lost it. Low height gets it back. Right side to Steves. Steves. Got that one blocked. Ethan Fields comes up and backhands it down the ice. Western Michigan clogging lanes and blocking shots, and that's a recipe for success on the penalty kill. That one's fired back down. 20 seconds to go on Minnesota Duluth's power play here. Low height, center ice, cross ice. Olsen going to keep, keep it in. And a very uneventful power play there for Minnesota Duluth as the Broncos get the penalty kill. Kill the penalty, rather. Olsen Dagger. With 7.45 to go in the second period, both these teams coming up empty with their two, or with Western Michigan's two power plays and the loose one. And good hustle there by Danny Helsendager as it looked like Duluth was going to win the race and beat out that icing, but Helsendager kind of screams past everybody to assure that that is an icing call, and the Broncos able to get a fresh unit out there. Duluth, this entire guys are going to have a defensive zone draw. Maybe an opportunity here for Western Michigan in a 1-1 hockey game. Harder fire that one wide. Sholin with it, backing up. Bounces it off the boards. Bronco zone. So Phillips comes up with it over to Carter Bergen, the Berger. Pierce lost it. Michael's chasing there, trying to get a quick turnover and an opportunity there. Fiedler goes down, lost an edge. Ends up centered, but in the Michaels on his stick. Comes bump over to Went. Far side. Back behind the net. Double back in behind the goal line and Cam Rowe. The Lambos. It's at the bump. Nice feed to him. And centering it. And safely shoved away there by Duluth and Gallatin. Ranger out in front. Kick save there by Cam Rowe. A couple of Bulldogs play. alone in front of the net, a defensive breakdown for Western Michigan, saved by Cam Rowe. Allison tried to shoot it, couldn't get his stick on it. 
Under six to go here in the second period. Battle for it in the corner. Western Michigan comes up with the Granger as it's fired down the ice. Went, went down. Perkins drops it. Over to Olsen. Now Perkins still trying to regain it. But Olsen right to the side there of Rowe when it's turned over. Sam Colangelo comes up with it. Looking for Hillebrand. Colangelo from the left side. Looking for some space. Colangelo versus it around. Lost it. Here comes Duluth on the exit. Steve couldn't get it cleanly. It's back with Western Michigan there. And fired down the ice here with five minutes to play here in the second period. First half of this period was high flying all offense, and it seems like both teams' defense is really shored up as nothing much has happened as far as grade A chances here in the last few minutes. Perkins with it. Shot saved there right in the chest of Cameron Rowe. As I say that, Perkins <laughs> alone at the top of the circles unleashes one. Sam Perkins has a quick shot for Minnesota Duluth. Some opportunities here in the second period, but we're still scoreless in the second period and 1-1 here with 4.46 to go here in Kalamazoo. Welcome back to Kalamazoo here on the campus of Western Michigan University, a snowy Western Michigan University here on this beautiful Friday evening. Lots of snow rolling in, especially last week and sticking around with the temperatures well below freezing. And it's a nice and toasty evening here in Lawson Ice Arena, which is not usually the case, but it, it is when it's uh, below 20. And, when we were in the negatives last weekend. Yeah, it's true, but hey, when snow's outside, that means it's hockey season. I'm all right with that. We're right in the thick of things here in the NCHC. Hugh Larkin with an opportunity here for the Broncos. Lost it, trying to find his teammate, and a stick goes flying up in the air. Dubinsky defended that well as the Broncos almost had something brewing, but a little poke check by Dubinsky. Larkin gets a stick back, because that one was wide of the net. Scoreless second period here. And penalty coming up here. Going against Tim Washi. And, and Larshi's he, he, Washi's a heavy hitter there. And you know, again, it, that's a tough one because there's there's no real effort to, to injure, but Jack Smith, the ones down on the ice here for Minnesota Duluth. He looks to be okay. He's, yeah. he's getting up slowly. You know, you just see Smith kind of hunched down right as Washi was coming in and kind of took the brunt of it with his helmet right on the edge of the dasher board there. A really tough hit to take and glad he's up and skating to the bench here. And they're going to take a look at this. And I think anytime you get contact with the head area, you have to, but you know, again, this is a tough one. Washi goes in and, you know, to me it seemed he was identifying the hit. And Smith kind of lowered his body at the last second, really took the brunt of it. But again, it's, it is, it is the onus to the player making the contact that you have to make the play safely. And yeah, that, that turn and lower right at the last second's tough. You see Washi looking up towards the rafters. So either way, Duluth's going to go on a power play. They're second of the night. And it looks to be, yeah, Smith really took a hard hit there. Uh, the coaches talking about it there as well. And going to be a penalty either way. So obviously, Minnesota Duluth going to get another advantage here on the, the power play. It's just going to. Is it, is it a two or is it a five? And if it is a five, does Washi stay in the game or does the game misconduct come with it? Officials taking a look at all the angles they can to make sure they get this call right. This is a big one here, especially with both these teams really evenly matched here this evening. Yeah, and you know, like I said, it was. Yeah, it, it's, it's a tough one too because there's contact to the head made, which makes me think it could be a five. I don't think there was any sort of 
malicious intent behind it. So maybe a five with no game misconduct, but we'll see what the stripes have to say about it here. And that'll be exactly what it is. Five minute major here for yeah. Hugh Larkin. So five minute penalty here for the Broncos and the Bulldogs with a golden opportunity to go on the power play. To take one more look here at the Hugh Larkin penalty. And again, I think it's it's the focus on the contact of the head is, you know, even you get the turn here, but Washi or goes Washi, through sorry. him. There's contact to the head made. I, I like to call it they didn't kick him out of the game. I don't think it was a malicious hit, but definitely contact to the head made. Five minute major to Tim Washi and a golden opportunity for Minnesota Duluth to take advantage of this game. And Tim Washi gets the five minute major there as you take a look at the comparison Minnesota Duluth power play second in the NCHC about 28 percent Western Michigan first in the NCHC and penalty kill Steve's gets the peon that one's shoveled aside quickly there and here comes Luke Granger with a golden opportunity all alone. Luke Granger shot save by Thiessen. Oh, big save. I thought Granger had him with that move to the backhand, but big save by Thiessen there as Granger was able to intercept and go in alone. Under four and a half to go in the penalty. Under three and a half to go in the period. It's the second time that Granger's been able to do that. The first time just not quite able to get alone, but Duluth's definitely going to have to be wary of number nine in white on the blue line as he's pressuring. Allison with it. Bass gets a hard hit there, and this one's going to go against the Broncos. And Hilson Dagger. Well, now what you want for Western Michigan now down two men and already looking to kill off a five minute major is Hilsendager now heads to the box. This crowd obviously disagreeing with the call. They're up in arms. See if we can take another look at it. Oh, another big hit Daniel Hilsendager here. As you see this one would be a really good look at it. And they're going to take a look at this uh, one as well. Me, to me, that's a good hockey play. You got Hilsendegger goes and makes the check in the corner there. It's it's not to the head. No head contact made. The Duluth player turns his back at the last second and absorbs the hit. I don't think they're going to take a look for long. And honestly, that's a, that's a tough one for you, for two minutes for me anyway. But the two minute call has been made nonetheless and Broncos are going to be down two men here on the short end of a five on three in a really tight hockey game here one to one with 258 left 258 to go in the second period 349 left on the Tim Washi penalty the major just a few moments ago when they're taking a look here on the Daniel Hilson dagger hit and seeing if there's anything malicious here. And like you said, Alex, looked like it was kind of just a bang bang hockey play there. Yeah, you know, to me, you, got, you see him line him up here, and right at the last second, the shoulders turn, but to me, again, there's no contact to the head made. Hilsendegger is going in for the shoulder to shoulder check, which it would have been. The last second shoulder turn really just spun him into the boards. I, I don't see that as being a malicious play whatsoever. But again, hey, Kenny, I'm not wearing the stripes. Yeah. I'm up here with you. So we'll see what what our professionals in the box there have to say about it as they are discussing here. And again, either way, Western Michigan on the short end of it. Now they're down two men for at least two minutes, but maybe more. We'll see what the call says here. So we're going to get the call here once again and a big one. And they put five minutes up on the board for Danny Hills and Dager. So another five minute major this time for the Broncos. It's Daniel Hilson dagger. Pat Fershweiler getting an explanation. Uh, obviously not very happy on the Western Michigan bench. Kind of just a perplexed look on his face. Not as 
animated, and I think maybe the animation is going to come out right now. But well, and that's the thing too is our coaches have video coaches in the stands here, so they're getting angles of this. They're getting communication with the bench, and you have to imagine that the Western Michigan coaches upstairs were letting them know what they saw, and obviously not in agreement with the officials. So back-to-back -back five minute man majors for Western Michigan has the Bulldogs with a golden opportunity here. They'll try to take the lead. 240 and counting here to go in the second period. Five on three. Bianc with it. Steve shot and scores. What a shot by Steves. You saw it coming. Ben Steves can really unload on it, and you have to keep an eye on him, especially on the power play. Steves rocks one home. The leading points getter and leading scorer here for Minnesota Duluth notches himself another one. Ben Steves, one of the best in the country, and a quick shot there to put the Bulldogs up on top. Two to one. And with these penalties by Western Michigan being five minute majors means those are five minute penalties no matter what. So we stay five on three here after that goal. The Broncos can find themselves in a little bit bigger of a hole here. They're going to have to dig themselves out. Ben Steves carries it. Perkins and Pionk in there to assist that goal from Steves. The Bulldogs right back at it here with a five on three. Two minutes to play in the second period. Steves. Back over to Pionk. Shot. That one was blocked wide of Camro. Hillebrand laying out for that one. He's got a long reach and a diving attempt to get the puck off the stick and Broncos able to get it down the ice. That's a big clear. One and a half to go in the second period. 3.30 and 2.20 and counting on the two five minute majors. Tim Washi, and Daniel Hilsendegger in the box for Western Michigan. A good strong play there by Cedric Fiedler again on the boards to clear that puck up and out. Broncos get a couple fresh skaters out there. Still a minute and eight seconds left here to kill off in the second period. Biondi, nice move there, but lost it as he went down, and it's fired down the ice by Western Michigan with under a minute to play now in the second period. Bulldogs get it into the Western Michigan zone again. 45 seconds and counting. In the second. Pionk. Work it behind Cam Rowe, trying to shovel it in there, and it's shoveled over to the side. And Pionk comes up with it. 20 seconds. That one's shoved off to the side by Cam Rowe and saved. Bulldogs can't keep it in the zone as Bjorn's going to have to chase that one out with 10 seconds. And that probably is going to do it here. One final push here for Minnesota Duluth with it under five. Olsen with it. Shot. And that one's wide of the Nets. 2-1 hockey game. 2-0-2 left on the Hilson Dagger five-minute major. And 51 seconds on the Tim Washi five minute major when we come back in the third period as both these teams head to the locker room Alex. Yeah some fireworks at the end of the period there and a couple of plays that really may change the, the landscape of this hockey game. Western Michigan still with a couple minutes to kill but I think happy that there was a period break in the middle of these majors to go collect themselves a little bit. Broncos chasing one but got some work to do on the kill first when they come back out for the third period. Two to one is our score. Minnesota Duluth looking to knock off the 11th ranked Broncos here. Ben Steves with a power play goal in the second period. That puts the Bulldogs on top in Kalamazoo. Second intermission concluding. Third period of play about to get underway here in Kalamazoo at Lawson Ice Arena. Kenny Scherlinger, Alex Goodman alongside our tremendous Bronco Productions crew here on NCHC TV. 
The lone goal for Western Michigan connected to this one. Going streaking here after Zach Galambo snatched his goal. He's assisted by those two guys, Alex, as both those guys have had a tremendous amounts of success in the last 10 games here for Western Michigan. Yeah, Colang or Colangelo on an eight game point streak now, Costantini with an 11 game point streak. And, you know, I think it's just a testament to how this Bronco staff has gone after the transfer portal as both of those guys coming in this year from other schools. And again, even looking at the goal scorer, Galambos, who is now on a five game point streak. He was a transfer last year for Western Michigan. So Pat Fershweiler using the transfer portal to his advantage. And he's got some guys on this roster really helping out. And good news for Minnesota Duluth. They're up two to one after leading two after two periods. And they are 5-0 oh, and 1 when leaning after two periods here. So right where they want to be in the wheelhouse. And they'll be on a five on three here for 50 seconds. If you're just tuning in here for the third period, back-to-back -back major penalties against Western Michigan. Still five on three here for Minnesota Duluth. They already got one on a Ben Steves goal, his 16th of the season. Looking for another one here. That one's a nice block there by Western Michigan. Steves with it. Shot, that one was blocked. Under 19 and a half to go in this third period. Pionk, cross ice pass. Perkins gonna get his stick on it. Into the corner, a battle. Fiedler went down as he's holding his head there. And here comes Tim Washi. So back to five on four. And some good time kill there. Good penalty killing by this Bronco unit. A couple of shot blocks. They got sticks and lanes, and they get a man back now. So five on four here for under a minute. 50 seconds and counting here. Western Michigan looking to... Only give up one goal in the two major penalties that gave Duluth the five on three for a substantial amount of time. And a quick shot there. Perkins couldn't get it. Check that. McMenamin couldn't get that one to go. Fast with it. Allerton. That one was blocked. Phillips got his foot on it. 14 seconds and counting here in the five on four. Under 10 to go. The penalty shot. That one stopped there by Western Michigan. And the Broncos kill it off. Full strength as Hilson Dagger comes out of the box. And the crowd erupts supporting their team after finishing that kill. And here come the Broncos. Dylan went with it. Three on two for Western Michigan. Tried to feed it. Berger got that one blocked up high into the netting. It's going to stop play with 17.41 to go in the third. I tell you, Kenny, if, if you're a believer in momentum, oh, this yeah. could be a big swing here in this hockey game, too. Even though Duluth gets that one goal at the end of the second period, the teams come back out for the third. Western Michigan kills the remainder of both five-minute majors, and now we get some five-on-five -five hockey, and that Western Michigan bench might be feeling good. A big momentum switch swing there as Western Michigan kills it. And a big shot there saved by Steve Thiessen. And Cassetti there kind of drops back off the draw to a point position and gets the one-timer off, but Deleuze defender is doing a pretty good job of clearing the traffic in front of the net, and Thiessen's able to see that one all the way in. A big face-off in the Minnesota Duluth zone right in front of a the goaltender Matthew Thiessen who's in there for the first time since November coming in for Zach Stasko who enters the weekend a little bit injured. He is dressed on the bench here this evening so we'll see how the rest of this weekend goes. Big shot there saved by Rowe still in play and Rowe Mishandled that one and a goal there for Minnesota Duluth to go up 3-1. Yeah, just a lob towards the net. There was a lot of traffic in front, and we'll see if it was deflected on the way in, but 
Kind of goes underneath Cam Rowe, who is sliding to his right and finds the back of the net, and that is a huge insurance goal for Minnesota Duluth. Looks like Braden Fisher get on, gets in on there. The center, the freshman from Winnipeg, Manitoba, notches his first goal of his career for the Bulldogs. And again, a huge goal is a seemingly inconsequential lob towards the net, but deflected at the last second by Fisher. If it is indeed his goal for his first career goal. A huge goal for Minnesota Duluth. And Braden Fisher is somebody they've talked about. He stepped in to a little bit bigger of a role. And they're going to take a look at it for a kicked in goal, actually. Yeah, so maybe the uh, Western Michigan staff here has a view at something. We'll see if we can get our eyes on it. You know, and again, you, you see these challenges that happen, and you have to imagine the, the staff has something that they saw. Oh, on, wow. Definitely off of Fisher's foot. But it, it, can we see if it hit anything else afterwards? It, Double doink off the feet, maybe it's just tough to see. Is there a kicking motion? Did it touch his foot last? There's a lot to dissect after this. There's an argument to be made for sure, but we'll see if the officials have undisputable evidence to overturn this one. It does look like yeah. he might Boy, from that of angle. stick it out to redirect it. You're absolutely right from that angle. That's a great angle there by our camera guys there. You see the puck coming in from the point. And a motion there by the leg. We'll see the officials here as they're going to make the call. Quick review. It was not kicked. We have a good goal. And they're going to call it a good goal. So they come out with a quick review. And Braden Fisher is going to get his first goal of his career. And somebody who's taken advantage of the more opportunities that he's been provided. Minnesota Duluth has been short at the center position all season long. And he gets a big goal here to put the Bulldogs on top by two, three to one. And we talked about that momentum switch. It looked like it was really in the back pocket of Western Michigan, but a big goal there for Minnesota Duluth to go up 3-1 here in the third period. And again, the crowd kind of got into it after the end of the penalty kills there. But once again, Duluth able to silence this loss and crowd a little bit. And a whistle here. It's going to stop play. Puck played with a high stick in Duluth's own zone. So faceoff will be in Western Michigan's offensive zone as Firstweiler sends out the Granger went and bump line. Again, a high-powered scoring threat for Western Michigan as the Broncos try to get one back here. So 249 here in the third period. Braden Fisher notches his first goal of the season of his career. Somebody who was recruited as a youngster by associate head coach Jason Herter, who of course spent nine seasons on the bench of Minnesota Duluth, won two national titles with them. 16 and a half to go and a delayed penalty coming up. The Broncos will go into power play as they get row out of the bot out of the crease and the Broncos are going to go in the Jersey Mike's power play for a sub above and bump just kind of hooked up there on the regroup this one's going to go against McMenamin headed to the box there but for Duluth 39 two minutes hook for a hooking McMenamin the transfer from Penn State is going to go to the box for a two minute minor here and it's going to give the Broncos an opportunity to try to cut into this deficit that sits at two right now. You know, and again, we come into this game talking about the high-powered Western Michigan power play as we get another look on the little hookup here. But Minnesota Duluth's penalty kill has been outstanding here so far tonight. And again, these two units out there doing battle. So Western Michigan is on the Penn Station power play, or the uh, Jersey Mike's power play. Broncos 0 for 2 so far on the power play here this evening. Colangelo one-timer saved there by Thiessen. Again, similar to Steve's, Colangelo is kind of the target here for the shooter position for this Western Michigan unit. Broncos love finding that puck to him on the left wing there. He's got a rocket off of his stick. Under 16 to go. Berger 
Over to Phillips. Phillips all alone there in the corner. Gets it back to Carter Berger. Back to Colangelo. Colangelo shot off the back boards there. And cleared down the ice. And some fresh skaters for both teams here with a minute 10 left on the Bronco power play. Cholin. Drop down to Granger. They get into the zone. And Sholin with it. It's at the Alex bump. He retreats. Olsen came up with it. Dylan Went giving chase in the corner. Granger's there to handle it. Now back to Went. 45 seconds left on the Bronco power play. Granger tried to cross pass ice, cross ice with it. Went shot went wide. Now to Luke Granger. Shots. Saved there by Thiessen. Broncos still with it. Under 30 to go in the power play. Western Michigan looking for a big goal here. Shots. The Lambos couldn't get that one to go. Lambos keeps it in. It's the Luke Granger. Granger, the went, couldn't get his stick on it. And that's going to probably do it there for the Bronco power play. And a nice penalty kill there for Minnesota Duluth. And again, Broncos on the power play, really finding the opportunities they want. But sometimes your best penalty killer has to be your goaltender. And Thiessen's looking fantastic here tonight. Thiessen up to 31 saves here this evening. For the regular starter, Stolsko. Puck over the glass there into the Lunatics as they fight over that souvenir. And we take a look at Braden Fisher as he notched his first points of his young career last weekend against Colorado College. Gets his first career goal tonight. He stepped in that center position after the Bulldogs have been hit with some injuries and some trouble there in this center position. And that's that next man up mentality. Out without Connor Loney, Dominic James, and Cole Spicer. Rocco's still threatening here. Full strength once again. Berger left alone. He shots and scores. Carter Berger was found all alone, backhanded it in the back of the net. And from the back end, Carter Berger has so much offensive skill. He gets that puck out of the corner again. Good physical play by Phillips to keep the play alive. Shingothi down on the corner, bumps that puck out. And a sweet move by Carter Berger, forehand, backhand, puts it in the back of the net. And that is a huge goal for this Western Michigan team. Carter Berger coming into this one only had one goal this season. He notches his second of the season, and it's a big one. The pull of the Broncos within one, three to two, under 14 minutes to play here in the third period. A little bit of another momentum swing in favor of Western Michigan. Here comes Minnesota Duluth, threatening once again their top line. That one was redirected. Rowe couldn't locate it. It's fired around. Gallatin with it. And it's the, gets it to Quinn Olsen. Olsen back to Steves right behind Cam Rowe in net. Steves with it. Shovels it out. To wrap it around. Broncos come up with it. They'll get it out of the zone. Duluth answers that goal with a full shift of offensive zone pressure. That's the response you want from Scott Sandlin's team. Don't let Western Michigan feed off the energy of that goal. Bump trying to get it. Lost it. Here comes Duluth. Quickly ahead. Charging at the net. That one did a sneak in. Scrum at the net. And they, they just fire that puck right on the goal line and throw everybody in at it. Puck was kind of hanging around, and then all heck breaks loose in the crease. 
Cam Rose run into a couple of times Duluth saying they want another look at it. Yeah, this one might have slid in there. This is going to show it, I believe. Once so here, it looks like it's across the line, but I'm going to tell you right now, they're going to look at it, but if this is ruled a goal, West Vermission is going to turn back around and say yeah. there's Biondi's stick pushing Cam's pad, Cam Rose pad, into the net. So I think we're going to have some lengthy discussion here. Was the puck in? Was it pushed in by stick? We'll see. We got a lot to sort out here at Lawson Ice Arena in Kalamazoo. Called no goal there. They're going to take a long look at this one. Three to two is their score with Minnesota Duluth on top. So after review, they're going to go and change the call, and it is a good goal. But as Alex yeah. Goodman told us before we went to break, that Pat Fershweiler, the head coach of Western Michigan, is probably going to challenge this one as a goaltender interference. This, this has all the feels of maybe a double review here because, again, it looks like Biondi stick pushes Cam Rose pad into the net right there. You see Cam Rose spinning in, which tells me that there's contact made. So they review to see if the puck crosses the line. And no, I don't think we're going to get a review actually here. They're going to stick with it. No, I stay mistaken. Minnesota Duluth taking a big two goal lead here as play continues. So Blake Biondi is going to get credit for that goal. And it's another big one for Minnesota Duluth. They lead it by two now, four to two. And Western Michigan again, they clawed back. They got within one again. And it's just, just a huge goal for Minnesota Duluth to get that cushion goal back again to regain that two goal lead here with 12 14 remaining. So Biondi scores with 740 here in the third period, assisted by Connor McMenamin. It's his seventh point of the season. 12 minutes to play here in the third period. Western Michigan with the work cut out for him. Minnesota Duluth looking for a big win on the road against a ranked opponent and the goal is off its moorings here as Washi went crashing into the net. Washi gets checked into Teeson into the post there. You know, I'm thinking about it too. So Pat Firstweiler had already challenged one play this game. If he challenges and loses another one, it's a penalty. So I wonder if he just felt the angles weren't good enough or the chances weren't good enough to overturn the call. That's kind of my thoughts on that last goal potentially, but Again, two goal lead for Minnesota Duluth as we approach the second half of the third frame and the Broncos here in their home ice arena got some work to do. Minnesota Duluth looking for their second win of the season over a ranked opponent, knocking off CC last weekend in overtime on a Ben Steves overtime winner. They face the 11th ranked Western Michigan Broncos here on the road. That one's going to pause play as Teeson's going to hold it. Take a look at the face-off battle there. 31-14, Western Michigan leads it in that department. But special teams has been a big factor here. And a very good performance so far in that for Matthew Thiessen, who's got 33 saves here this evening. The other side, Cam Rowe with 21. Approaching the halfway point here in the third period, Zach Galambos shovels it into the Bulldog ends. Battle for the puck. Oh, the goal line here. Now it's bump, shovels that down the ice. Now pour an icing. And we'll go back to the other end here with 11.07 to go. Four to two is our score. We're just tuning in, Minnesota Duluth. Took an early one nothing lead on an Anthony and Jeannie goal. Buster Michigan tied it up. Right before the first intermission with Zach Galambos notching a goal. Ben Steves notched a 2-1 lead for Minnesota Duluth. Braden Fisher 
Another one to make it 3-1. Carter Berger made it a one-goal game again, 3-2. was 6-15 to go, or at the 6-15 mark in the third period. And then a Blake Biondi goal was seven at the 7.40 mark in the third period. That's where we stand at 4-2 right now. Ten minutes to play here in the final period. Game one between these two will face off tomorrow at 6 p.m. right here on NCHC TV. And you're going to see Minnesota Duluth here not necessarily shell up, but they're going to be making the safe plays the rest of the game, just doing anything to get that puck out of the zone. And soon enough here, that clock's going to become a factor. Shot there wide of Cam Rowe. Redman misfired on that one. Battle for it at center ice. Mr. Michigan with it. Let's say Mateo Costantini. Marcos carried in, shoveled aside by Thiessen. Centered. Colangelo with it. Brings it back around. Lost it. Here comes the Bulldogs. Pioink with it. And then just shovels it down towards the net. Rowe comes out and plays it. Dangerous play. Broncos get away with it. Under nine and a half to go in the third period. Four to two. Visitors from Duluth, Minnesota. Leading it over the Western Michigan Broncos here at Lawson Ice Arena. Johnson had it. Shovels it over to the Smith. Johnson shots. That one's kicked to the side by Cambro. Nice save. Washi takes a big hit, goes down hard. His head snap back there. Took it right in the back. Yeah, big hit there. Washi laboring to the bench as he takes a, a check from the back and Broncos able to turn it back the other way. Elsadega trying to center it. Michaels with it. Gets shoved into this corner. And Bauer's going to have to chase it back with eight and a half and counting to go in the third period. Shot on goal count. 36 for Western Michigan. 25 for Minnesota Duluth. And the Broncos have definitely found opportunities offensively, but not as much traffic in front of the net as Minnesota Duluth has had here today. And again, Thiessen has been outstanding here tonight, making some big stops, up to 35 saves now. Gothi chasing. Duluth comes up with it as they exit the zone. Battle for the pocket, center ice. Gallatin trying to shovel it over. And some fresh skaters on the ice for the Bulldogs. Carter Berger's got a goal tonight. The last goal scorer for Western Michigan. Turns it over. Berger gets it back. Granger, Luke Granger comes up with it. It's an Alex bump. He lost it. Battle for it once again. Drops into the shallow ends of Duluth and fired around the boards. Lambos fired it towards the net, wide. And another big hit there, Alex Bump. The big hit on Olsen. Probably the quietest this game has been so far between these two. Bronco fans waiting for something. Colangelo with it. Finds Costantini, he scores! The two-man explosion there for Western Michigan. Colangelo and Costantini. Get the Broncos within one. Yeah, the Bronco fans were waiting for it, and the Broncos answered again. Yeah, these two guys, an offensive explosion, a nice pass there through the seam. Colangelo to Costantini, who goes five-hole on Thiessen. Thiessen just couldn't squeeze that one quick enough to make the stop. And that's a big goal there, and right on cue, we were talking about how quiet it was. The Broncos come firing down the ice, and Colangelo and Constantini link up once again. 
Hillebrand also credited with an assist there. His 15th point of the season. Again, it was, it was a quick strike. It wasn't sustained offensive zone pressure. It was a quick rush and a little miscommunication on the Duluth D zone as they both kind of went for the same guy and left Costantini wide open. Johnson carries it, so now this game has new life for the Broncos. But it's a shot and a score right on cue. Minnesota Duluth answers, and it's Mangini once again. And Mangini, I mean, that is a, as timely as a goal as ever as Western Michigan again gets to within one, but when Mangini with his second of the night, a quick little bump out, and he's alone in the crease, a little move on Cam Rowe and into the back of the net. And again, Western Michigan chasing two. Anthony Mangini, his second of the night. And that one was just too easy. And another goal there. Five for Minnesota Duluth to go back on top by two. And what an answer there for Minnesota Duluth Bulldogs and Anthony Mangini, who had a, the first goal of this game back in the first period. That was at the 142 mark. This one at the 13-17 mark of the third period, assisted by Jack Smith, his fourth assist of the season. Just timely goal scoring for this Minnesota Duluth team as it seems in the biggest moments of this game, they've been able to find the back of the net. Duluth still aggressive here, making it hard for the Broncos to break out. Approaching the six minute mark here in the third period. Michaels couldn't handle it. Broncos get some fresh skaters here. Bump, lost it for a second. Berger, rips it across the ice. Long pass there to Bump. From Scholin, Bump still with it on the right side. He was looking for Went there. Bulldogs come up with it. And it's fired out of the zone by Aaron Pionk. Under five and a half to go in the third period. Two goal lead here for Minnesota Duluth. Looking for a win against the 11th Broncos here on the road. Colangelo with it. It's the Costantini. Costantini shots. Battle for the puck at the net. Both teams looking for it. And a scrum once again, and they're going after each other. Chaos in front of the net. No one knew where that puck was. And the puck finally comes up, and it's shoveled way down the ice by Blake Biondi. And there's going to be a lot to sort out here. As Thiessen just got out of there. And as your goaltender, you just got to get out of those situations. You never know what's going to happen or who's going to land on you. So. Abandoned ship. They're still going after each other, They're going after Colangelo there. Well, it's interesting too, because there, there was never a whistle blown, which means the puck was loose. The guys were going after the loose puck. And obviously, being in the crease, Minnesota the loose going to take exception as their goalie was sprawled on his back. But we'll see what they're able to sort out here. Is yeah, lots to sort out if you take another look here at this play. Costantini. Again, the puck is, you see it's loose there in the crease. Everyone's fighting for it. Thiessen loses his helmet, so he's kind of ducking for cover. And Hillebrand loses his helmet. I mean, there isn't a, a yard sale out there on the ice. We're even. And there's a lot of guys in the box for both these teams. We got Costantini, Colangelo, Hillebrand in there. The penalty box for Western Michigan. We got a lot to sort out, but not before we take a quick break here for Kalamazoo. 4.58 to go in the third period. 5-3. Minnesota Duluth on top of Western Michigan. Welcome back to Lawson Ice Arena. Kenny Trilliger, Alex Goodman. 4.58 to go in the third period. Five to three is our score. Minnesota Duluth, and we had a scrum at the net after a shot from Western Michigan. 
And I believe we're going to get roughing three apiece for both these squads here, Alex. Yeah, they paraded uh, guys from both teams in the box. Nothing's on the board yet. I think they just took three forwards from Western Michigan, Hillebrand, Costantini, Colangelo. But again, helmets were ripped off, so we got equipment issues. Might just be two aside. But regardless, I think it's going to be even up. Coincidental minors for everybody. And under five minutes to go, we're going to be five on five hockey again with Minnesota Duluth still holding on to that two goal lead. Take a look at the penalty box there for Duluth and head coach Scott Sandlin. His 24th season at the helm of Minnesota Duluth. Bulldogs looking for a big win on the road here in NCHC play. Still five on five here after the scrum there at the Minnesota Duluth Nets. Under five to play here. Minnesota Duluth looking to hold on to their two goal lead here in the third period. Western Michigan looking for a comeback here with under five to go. So Owen Gallatin gets a roughing. Chad Hillebrand gets a roughing for Western Michigan. Matteo Constantini and Connor McMenamin for West or for Duluth gets a roughing. So two and two roughing penalties. Gallatin for Duluth, McMenamin for Duluth, Hillebrand and Constantini for Western Michigan. Approaching the four minute mark, battle for the puck in the corner. Steves comes up with it. Ben Steves, who's got a goal here this Evening, the game winning goal as it stands right now. And they took a 2 1 lead. Under four to play. Turnover. Another chance for Duluth. Again, Duluth is defending before Western Michigan. You break out of the zone. A pickpocket there turned the other way is another chance for Minnesota Duluth here. Berger comes up with it with 3.30 to go in the third period. Berger down the ice. Hits the brakes. Over to Galampos. Mishandles it. And here comes Duluth. Smith with it. All alone. Smith over the shot and a score for Minnesota Duluth. 6-3 to three in a play there by Kyle Clevin to score the sixth goal of the evening for Minnesota Duluth. And Western Michigan as time running out puts everyone down low as both defensemen were in towards the net. As that puck comes back the other way it's a two on O oh, and nothing Cam Rowe can do about that as Smith waits till the last possible second feeds one across to Clevin who connects on a one timer. And that's six on the board for Minnesota Duluth this evening. Tyler Clevin gets that one to go and they notches his first goal of the season. It is third of his career. And some fans head into the exits here at Lawson Arena with a three goal lead for the visitors from Minnesota Duluth. Duluth out of play up into the netting. Stop play at 303. One well, and, and you look at this Duluth lineup and I was almost going to mention earlier in the broadcast that it seems like the scoring is so much weighted on the shoulders of Ben Steves. They needed some secondary scoring. Well, that's been the story of this evening for me. The secondary scoring has showed up for Minnesota Duluth here tonight. You've got guys scoring the first career goals or first goals of the season, and that's been all over the board. Steves has one, but you got five goals from the secondary scorers of this Bulldog team, and Western Michigan needed to find an answer for that and wasn't able to. Spoke to head coach Pat Fershweiler earlier this week. He said that the record that Minnesota Duluth has coming into the, this weekend is not a testament to how good their hockey team is and battle tested they are. And it's shown here on this Friday night. They have answered the bell coming into a very lively barn here at Lawson Ice Arena with the fans and the students really getting after the visitors. A fast hockey game they got on top early on. And they haven't looked back. And they've gotten scoring from 
Some unlikely guys, but they've been stepping up. Luth has battled some injuries this season. And a great job in net as well for Matthew Thiessen, who's making his first start since November. This is his ninth game played here this season, and he's got 37 saves tonight for Minnesota Duluth and has stood strong against this high-powered offense of Western Michigan. Yeah, it's not too often. I mean, Western Michigan is, uh, you know, a top offense in, in the country, and they put 40 shots on goal tonight. You don't see a team like that can score as much as Western Michigan, get 40 shots on goal, and and be down 6-3. to three. And just, again, a testament to the timely scoring and answer back of this Duluth team. Western Michigan's reeling a little bit. Nolan finds Larkin. And Gothi comes up with it, lost the puck. Young had it, Fiedler. Rowan Michaels. Michaels shots. That one's wide of the net on the left side. Carter Berger couldn't handle it. He's going to go down into the Bronco end as Cam Rowe's going to play it. Under a minute and a half to go in the third period. Both these teams will be right back at it tomorrow here. Game two of the two game series. 6 p.m. here on NCHC TV. We'll have that right here for you. It's one of the beauties of how college hockey is scheduled. You lose on a Friday night, you don't have to wait long to try to extract some revenge on your opponent. Broncos are gonna try to fix some things for sure for tomorrow, but again, a, a chance tomorrow at six to even up the series. How big is it to take game one on a, a road trip for this Duluth team? Western Michigan's gonna drop the two straight here. They fell to Miami on Saturday down in Ohio last weekend. And Duluth is going to answer their loss against Colorado College on Saturday with a big win here on the road. And again, the, the parity that is in the NCHC, top to bottom, this conference is just loaded with skill and talent, and, and everyone's just so well coached. I mean, it, it, it's like a mini professional conference. Yep. These guys are all trying to go to the NHL. There's just so much talent on these teams, but the parity is so much there that any given weekend, you have no idea who's going to win or lose these games, and it's why the fans love this game in the NCHC and keep coming back to watch excellent college hockey every weekend. It almost sounds like a broken record when you're talking about the NCHC and how deep the, the league is. But it is, it is the truth. And the talent and the quality of teams and programs. Duluth, upper echelon of college hockey. Back-to-back -back national champions in 18 and 19. And don't forget they were number one in the country or trending that way in the year that was canceled due to COVID. And again, I think some people in that room might have might have thought it was going to be back to back to backs. This one about to come to a close here under 10 seconds to play. Minnesota Duluth going to get a big win here on the road. One more shot saved there from Cam Rowe. But Minnesota Duluth is going to win this one 6-3 here in Kalamazoo and knock themselves their second win of the season against a ranked opponent as the 11th ranked Broncos fall here tonight at home 6-3, a three-game or a two-game losing streak here for Western Michigan. These two will go right back at it tomorrow. Alex, get your final thoughts on this one. Yeah, you know, it was just a really solid, complete game from the Bulldogs. I think Minnesota Duluth came out with pace at the beginning of each period. They scored timely goals. You know, every time Western Michigan was able to answer or get within one, it was turned right back around Duluth, you know, getting an insurance goal. Well-coached team, well-played game on both sides, but Western Michigan's going to have to make some adjustments to try to get the split here tomorrow night. Both these teams will be right back at it here on NCHC TV. 6 p.m. tomorrow, our coverage starts here for NCHC Hockey on NCHC TV. Minnesota Duluth answers early on. The Broncos answer right back. 
But the Bulldogs, a little bit too much for the Broncos here this evening as they get a big win on the road, six to three against Western Michigan. Again, we're right back with you tomorrow, 6 p.m. between these two for game two between the Bulldogs and the Broncos. For Kenny Schrellinger, Alex Goodman, and our tremendous Bronco Productions crew, so long. Have a great night, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.